an introduction to the chi-squared goodness of fit hypothesis test. We start with a random sample and we're testing to see whether the data follows some given probability distribution, which could be one of these. So we may be testing for the discrete distributions, binomial, Poisson, or just some probability table. So does our random sample fit one of these? Or for continuous data, does our random sample fit a normal distribution or rectangular or an exponential distribution? And we can test both the distribution and its parameters. So for H0 here, we're testing both the probability distribution and its assumed parameters. And for H0 here, we're only testing the probability distribution because we've already calculated these values from the given data, so we're not testing those. And the implications of this will be on the number of degrees of freedom. So our data goes into a table where we have our observed values, the O values, and these must be frequencies, and then using the probability distribution we calculate the E values. Again, these are frequencies, which must be at least five. And then we calculate our test statistic, X squared. This formula is on page 14 in the AQA formula book. And here's the formula. And we've used this formula in unit S3 with contingency tables. And we're going to use the chi-squared probability tables for our critical value. So we always work with the right-hand tail of the chi-squared distribution. This is always a one-tailed test. So we're either going to accept H0 or we're going to reject H0. The only complicated part of the whole test is how many degrees of freedom should be used. And I'll come back to this. So to start with, we take our random sample, we have our observed frequencies in our random sample, and we place them into classes, individual categories. So for discrete data, our categories might look like this, or we can have categories like this, more than or equal to five. For continuous data, our categories may look like this. There must be no overlap. So if you have a value that's 30, it fits here and not here. The calculated E values must be at least five. And we can see there's a problem with this E value here. It's less than five. So we need to combine that with uh, something sensible. And the one next to it, is 6.2. If we add these two together, we have a new class here, which is more than or equal to 7. The number of classes here at the moment is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. By combining, we will have four classes, like this. Example 1, we're testing a normal distribution, so does the data follow a normal distribution, with these assumed parameters. So k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So 4 degrees of freedom. So if we were working with a 5% significance level, 5% in the critical region, 95% in the acceptance region, P is 0 0.95, 4 degrees of freedom. This is our critical value that goes here. If from the given data we have calculated the mean and the variance, so we're no longer assuming these two values as we did in the previous example. So in H0, the data follows a normal distribution. There is no mention of the mean and the variance here because we've calculated them in our working out. So now we use k minus 3 degrees of freedom. 
it was k minus 1. Now it's k minus 3 because we have these two additional bits of information that we've calculated. Example 3, does the data follow a rectangular distribution? There are no population parameters to work here. So we're not working out n, p, lambda, mean, variance, nothing like this. So this is always k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we have five categories here, so four degrees of freedom. Example 4, does the data follow a binomial distribution with this population parameter, p equals 0 0.7? We have k classes, so k minus 1 degrees of freedom. 6 minus 1, 5 degrees of freedom. And we're testing both the binomial and its assumed parameter. Example 5, again we're working with the binomial distribution but from the given data we've calculated and shown that p, the population parameter, is 0 0.7. So in H0 we state that the data follows a binomial distribution. We don't mention p equals 0 0.7 in our hypothesis. We're not testing the value. We're only testing whether the data follows the binomial distribution because we know that p is 0 0.7 because we've calculated it. So this time it's k minus 2 degrees of freedom. So k is 6, so 4 degrees of freedom. Example 6, does the data follow a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda equals 3? There are k classes, so k minus 1 degrees of freedom. And we're testing both the Poisson distribution and its assumed parameter. So 5 degrees of freedom. Example 7, from the given data we've calculated the mean lambda. So H0, the data follows a Poisson distribution. There is no mention of the mean lambda. We're not testing the mean lambda. We're only testing whether the data follows the Poisson distribution. So K minus 2 degrees of freedom. 4 degrees of freedom. Example 8, we're working with a discrete probability table. And these tables came up in unit S2. So H0, the data follows the given probability distribution. There are no population parameters to test here. So there's no, you know, like lambda value or a p-value or a mean or a variance and so on. These are always k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we have six classes. 6 minus 1, 5 degrees of freedom. Example 8, we're testing whether the data follows an exponential distribution with a given mean. And you can either state the mean here, or we can say that lambda is equal to 1 over 20. There are k minus 1 degrees of freedom. So 5 degrees of freedom. Example 9, from the given data we've calculated the parameter lambda, so in H0 we're just testing to see whether the data follows an exponential distribution. There's no mention of the mean or the value of lambda here, so k minus 2 degrees of freedom. So 4 degrees of freedom for this table. So just summarising the method, uh, starting with a random sample, H0 and H1, mention the probability distribution name here and with its parameters, if applicable, work out your E values from the given O values, your test statistic, and then working with the chi-square distribution we work out the number of uh, degrees of freedom and then the critical value here. And the complicated part in the whole thing is really just remembering how many degrees of freedom to use.